In this video, we are going to learn about the Pythagorean theorem. The formula for the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a and b represent the legs of a right triangle, and c represents the hypotenuse, which is the side that is across from the right angle. Pythagorean theorem is basically used for two reasons. One, to find a missing side of a right triangle, or it could be used to verify if three side lengths form a right triangle. In order for it to be a right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem must work or be satisfied. If we take a look at a diagram, A and B again represent the legs. Those are the two sides that form the right angle, whereas C is the hypotenuse, the side that is across from the right angle. It might be helpful to note of some Pythagorean triples. These are basically sets of numbers that show up very frequently in Pythagorean theorem problems. So I've listed four examples here. 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, and 8, 15, 17. Should note too that multiples of these triples also apply. So for instance, 3, 4, 5 could be shown as 30, 40, and 50 as the size of a right triangle, basically taking that initial triple and timesing each side by 10. Or like 5, 12, 13 might show up in a problem as 10, 24, 26, each side being doubled. And we could come up with any variation of this, but these triples represent the reduced values okay, in simplest form. Let's take a look at some examples using the Pythagorean theorem. Number one, find the length of the hypotenuse to the nearest tenth. So I can see that I already know the legs of the triangle are six and nine, but I'm looking for the hypotenuse, which is C. Six squared plus nine squared equals C squared, and now I'm going to just simplify. So I'm going to change out the six squared and the nine squared to 36 and 81. Simplify and I get C squared. And in order to get rid of the squared, we have to take the square root of both sides. And this problem is asking us to find the length to the nearest tenth. And I get 10.8 is equal to C here. Now remember the hypotenuse should always be the largest side of a right triangle. So it makes sense that we had a side of nine and we had to get something bigger than that as our answer. All right, let's take a look at number two. Find the length of the missing leg. When you are looking for a leg, or even when you're looking for hypotenuse, it doesn't matter which leg you assign to be A and which leg you assign to be B. So I'm just gonna make A equal to eight in this example and B is gonna be our missing side. So if you want to, you could always put the ABC labels on the triangle itself, if that helps you substitute it into the formula. So 64 plus B squared equals, I'm actually gonna sub in 17 here, 17 squared, which is 289. I'm going to subtract 64 on to both sides. And when I take the square root here, I get that B is equal to 15. Now, that wasn't too much work to get that B is equal to 15, but I would like to point out that the values in this problem were 8, 15, 17, which if I zoom out here, this is one of our Pythagorean triples. So if you see that, that you have two of the three values and they're in the correct spot, we can tell the hypotenuse is a 17, the largest side then you could use your Pythagorean triples to help you find that missing value. We mentioned before that there's another use of the Pythagorean theorem, which is to verify if three side lengths form a right triangle. So it, number three says, is a triangle with side lengths 5, 8, and 11 a right triangle? Justify your answer. You might know the triangle inequality theorem that basically says that the sum of the two smaller sides must be greater than the third side in order to form a triangle. So that works here. We know we have a triangle, but the question is really speci specifying, is this a right triangle? And in order for it to be a right triangle, if I take those values and plug them into the Pythagorean theorem, I have to see if both sides are going to be equal to one another. So 
5 squared plus 8 squared equals 11 squared. Simplifying that, that gives me 25 plus 64 equals 121. 89 equals 121, and that is definitely not true. So since it's not true, this is not a right triangle. So I'm going to say no because the given side lengths do not satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. All right, moving on to some other examples, let's continue to practice these ideas of using the Pythagorean theorem to find missing sides of right triangles or to verify that we have a right triangle. All right, number four, we're looking for the length of the hypotenuse here. Now, I certainly could do a squared plus b squared equals c squared and plug in, but this 6, 8 sounds familiar to me, right? I can think about those two values and I'd say, does that relate to one of our triples? If you remember the first Pythagorean triple was three, four, five. I noticed that these values seem to be double that. So six, eight, and that leads me to believe the missing side, the hypotenuse is 10. And sure enough, if I go and do Pythagorean theorem, I will in fact get 10 as my value of C. Number five, find the length of the missing leg to the nearest hundredth. So I'm gonna assign the 10 to be A and say that we're looking for B in this problem. But remember, if you chose to put 10 as B and the missing side as A, we'll get the same answer in the end. So I have 100 plus B squared equals 441. Sub subtract 100 onto the other side. And we're going to take the square root of 341. This problem is looking to the nearest hundredth, which is two decimal places or two places past the decimal. So 18.47 once I put that into my calculator. Again, put that in my calculator. I'm just taking the square root of 341 and rounding to two places past the decimal point. Number six, find the length of the diagonal in the rectangle in simplest radical form. So if I take a look at this here, it might look confusing that we have a rectangle, but a rectangle is really composed of two right triangles and the diagonal of it is really just our hypotenuse. So I'm going to plug in seven and four for B and we're gonna look for the hypotenuse length. 49 plus 16 is equal to C squared. I get 65 equals C squared and we wanna take the square root of that. So when it's in simplest radical form, we are going to leave our answer with a radical, but we just wanna check if that radical can be simplified. Sometimes it can, sometimes it can't. The way we know it can is you think about the factors of 65 in this case, basically the numbers that go into it evenly, and you try and see if you could think of any that are perfect squares. If I think about numbers that go into 65, so for instance, uh, 5 goes into 65 and 13, neither of those are perfect squares. And if I continue to think about factors of 65, which there's not many, I do not get any that are perfect squares. So radical 65 is actually just our simplest radical form in this case. All right, number seven, find the altitude of the isosceles triangle below. We should remember that altitude means height, right? Think about it how you heard a plane is flying at an altitude of fill in the blank, right? That's representing the height the plane is flying at. So I'm going to draw the height in and altitude always forms 90 degree angles with the base. Since this is isosceles, I also know that the base is going to be split in half by the altitude five and five. So if I look at this example, really what I have is two separate right triangles. Let's just look at one of them. Okay. You can highlight it like I have here, or if it helps you, you could just draw it separately off to the side, and you realize we're looking really for one of the legs of the triangle. I notice that these values seem familiar. I recognize that this is part of the 5, 12, 13 Pythagorean triple. 
So I know that, okay, my missing side, the altitude of the isosceles triangle is in fact 12. All right, let's take a look at a word problem in number eight. A 12 foot ladder leans against the wall of a building. The base of the ladder is six feet from the building on level ground. How many feet up the wall to the nearest tenth of a foot is the top of the ladder? Well, we know we're learning about Pythagorean theorem, so that should give us a hint that we're forming a right triangle. The ladder is 12 feet and the ladder is leaning. Think about if you were climbing a ladder, you wouldn't climb it when the ladder is completely vertical. It has to be slanted somehow. So I know that basically the hypotenuse is 12 feet in this case. The base of the ladder, that means the bottom of the ladder, is six feet from the building on level ground. So I know this is six feet, because remember here's the base of my ladder. How many feet up the wall to the nearest tenth of a foot is the top of the ladder? So we're looking for the height in this case. So let's plug this into Pythagorean theorem. I'm gonna set the six as A. Get B by itself. So subtract 36 over, take the square root of both sides. But this problem wants us to find it to the nearest tenth. So I'm gonna put square root of 108 into my calculator and I get that the height of the top of the ladder, or how many feet up the wall the ladder is, is 10.4 feet. All right, for our last problem, we're just gonna practice the Pythagorean triples. These can be very helpful uh, to solve any problem that has to do with a right triangle, and there are many of them in geometry. There are also problems on the SAT and ACT that could show up that use Pythagorean triples. So it is helpful to use as like a time-saving tool. So nine says, given two sides of a right triangle, A and B are legs, C is the hypotenuse, find the third side using Pythagorean triples. If I look at A, if the legs are three and four, the hypotenuse is five. If I look at B, I notice this kind of looks like the six and 10. I saw these numbers before today. If I look at number four, I realize that this is eight. So notice here that all of these numbers have been doubled. If I look at C, five and 13, the missing leg is 12. Okay, I'm kind of just referencing my list of Pythagorean triples from earlier. D, the missing leg is 24. In E, I see 30 and 50. And if you remember the example earlier in the video, we talked about the three, four, five triple, how it could be multiplied by 10 and be 30, 40, and 50. And 50. So I know here that A would be 40, right? It does not matter if they are listed in order from least to greatest or if they're in some random order. We just wanna make sure A and B are the legs. And finally for F, 15 and 17, the missing leg will be eight. Okay. Hopefully this video helped you understand Pythagorean theorem, how it's used, um, and also Pythagorean triples.